Hi guys, I'm super excited to bring you this review. Many of you already know of the amazing Borealo Pelter fossil and the treasure trove of precious goodies yielded by that incredible find. You may even have the collector Borealo Pelter, which I've just reviewed, a truly beautiful model. So, without further gilding the lily, and with no more ado, here is the PNSO Gavin the Borealo Pelter. Like with all PNSOs, it comes in this beautifully white team box. And there's just something about PNSO boxes that gives it a pristine, pure, and aesthetically pleasing look. Now, inside, you get the, uh, the PNSO booklet, which I won't read except to say that it's got the usual educational message aimed at children. And this time, Gavin telling children in the first person how he was fossilized, titled, I am lucky. Yes, you are Gavin, and so are we. Now, removing the clamshell, um, right away, guys, I've got to tell you in terms of the sculpted detail, this is another model worthy of Borealo Pelter and Pinesso. It's about 17.5 centimeters, which is 7 inches, and at an estimated 5.5 meters or 18 feet, this makes it 1 to 31 scale, which makes it bigger than the 1 to 36 collector. Just like the collector, this one's intricately sculpted to the minutest detail. It's very clear that plenty of research went into its design. Now, the greatest excitement with the fossil has been the osteoderms preserved in situ. So, Borealo Pelta has the most accurate representations of armor arrangement you'll have on any ankylosaur. A total of 172 osteoderms were identified. I won't be that anal about counting them here. Now, these pictures are from Caleb Brown's 2017 paper. And even a cursory glance hints at the great effort made to reflect accuracy in this model. In the neck, you see the uh, cervical scapular spines in three distinct transverse bands, with the gaps between filled in by a mosaic of tiny scales, suggesting some flexibility in the sagittal plane. Then again, there are 12 thoracic ones and an estimated eight more of uh, eight or more sacral ones. Of course, it's estimated because sadly, we don't have the uh, latter one-third of the animal. Um, some bands were found to be compressed laterally uh, in the study, but I only see one such example in this model. Now, looking at this diagram, we've just never ever been able to pinpoint ankylosaur osteoderm arrangements with this exactitude. So there's always some artistic license expected in artwork. But with this particular ankylosaur, I mean, we know the location, the size, the shape of these, and to what extent keratinization built up on the bony cores, and that is huge. So I'm really surprised no other company I know of up to this point has jumped on the bandwagon. And likewise for Zool as well, but that's another story. The head's nicely detailed, and you can make out the capitiguli, the large frontal parietal, um, the nasal ones, a cluster of them here, and the orbital ones, forming a kind of a ledge over the eye. And going up the shoulders, of course, we have the periscapular spines, so distinctive a feature of nodosaurs. And this time, no guesswork for how much keratinization to account for. We have osteoderms on the shoulders, uh, we have the forearm scutes, and while triangular, they don't project as much as the ones on the collector model. Speaking of collector, this animal is just as portly, and its sides have much larger osteoderms than those on the collector. Now, on the underside, look at this very intricate, beautiful mosaic of chainmail. Um, you know, very fine scales from the throat, down the belly, all the way to the tail. Notice how they follow the subtle skin folds and creases in a very natural way. And down the tail, we can see uh, the spiky osteoderms continue 
and you can see the subtle difference in the appearance of the underbelly scales with the undertail ones here. Now the proportions of the feet and toes are just so pleasingly accurate, at least to my eyes. Coming up here, you can of course continue to see the incredible detail going down all the way to the end of the tail tip. All right, now as incredible as this model is, I have one gripe, the color. Now, first of all, we all know that the actual models will never look like their release images. We understand that, we accept that. However, if like me, you first knew of this figure from the prototype images, then these were probably the first ones you saw. They really made me fall in love. Now, it just reminded me so much of the sideshow Gastonia, but in this case, the actual color is really a bit of a letdown. Now, you compare this image with the model. You can see as nice as the paintwork and variations are, um, some opportunity has been lost. Uh, particularly, we've, we've lost the, uh, the ivory, the very light ivory going to the blended black tip look on this prototype here. Because they've opted to change that ivory to something a lot more brownish. And if you look at this picture from the top, um, that one really uh, did affect me a little bit because uh, I was really so looking forward to having something at least pretty similar to what I saw in the release image. Um, but you don't get that. And because the whole area here is so brown, um, under certain lighting, this whole area really does look like a pretty continuous expanse of the same color. Now, what reddish brown is, is up for interpretation. And PNSO is gone with something really a lot darker than you'll see on the Borealo Pelter. One thing I really noticed is, you know, if you watch my collector Borealo Pelter review, uh, I love the, the way the, the shadows played across the top. Uh, because, you know, um, of the contrast between the shadows and the lighter colour of the brown here. But um, unfortunately, that's something that's lost in the PNSO, simply because the shadows are kind of swallowed up by the overall darkness of the brown. You know, I can't help but feel that some dry brushing over the armour here would have um, really made this already incredible sculpt so much better and do it much more justice. Just gonna make the details pop out so much. You know, even the PNS, uh, even the collector had some. Still, I want to be fair. If you read Dr. Mark Witten's excellent book, The Paleo Artist's Handbook, he does say there's no reason for osteoderm to be a different color than the surrounding skin because it is covered by skin. So that perhaps excuses this. But when I see an amazing scalp like this that could have been brought out so much more, uh, it really is a bit of a waste. Now that said, they have made some effort to create washes. Uh, you'll see the front of the animal is of a different color to the thoracic region, which again differs slightly as you go down the tail. I also like this little patch of uh, something a little, more, a little bit more ochre, uh, perhaps echoing the colors on the slab that tip Mr. Sean Funk off that he had hit on something incredibly precious. Now, PNSO has also really used a very sharp contrast uh, to create the counter shading between the very pale belly with the very dark dorsal side. Um, at the same time, they've colored the flank spikes and also the skin an intermediary color. So in fact, a very nice, beautiful triple layer look here has been created. Um, you know, I, I have pointed out different shades and fades, but um, these are subtleties that I can see because I'm using a very specific lighting. On a shelf, I fear that much of this would be lost. The only thing I wish would have been different is the size. Now, when I saw the initial photos, I, I hoped it was going to be a large scale PNSO and it might scale well with my Sideshow Gastonia. Now, at that size and a bigger canvas, we could have gotten a paint job akin to what we saw in the prototype, maybe. 
uh, not only would they look good together, great actually, uh, it would truly be like PNSO carrying the torch left vacant by sideshow of large size, beautifully sculpted dinosaurs, but without the same price tag. And finally, I'll say that were I to display this next to my collector Borealo Pelter, they go rather well together. Perhaps the collector uh, model was that of a younger individual with a different color camouflage scheme than the adult. And as it matures, it will take on that much darker hue. Maybe the differences could simply be put down to sex. Whatever it is, I'm very happy to now have two representations of this nodosaur. And despite the small disappointment in the color, he definitely belongs on the shelf of any Ankylosaur fan. So that's it for now. See you guys soon. And meanwhile, stay safe, healthy, and stay calm, especially for tonight and for tomorrow. Alright guys, take care now.